over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus.
I speak Jesus, amen. Yeah, amen. There is no other name given among men whereby you must be saved, Jesus. Amen. Uh, that's good stuff. I really enjoyed it. I, I like that our churches uh, come a long way, and uh, and, and we're jo- what is it, Mike? Happy, joyous, and free. Amen. We we took off the chains. Let the gospel free. Amen. Let it free. Now turn with me, if you will, to the book of John. First John, sorry. First John, chapter number five. And I am happy to report, if the Lord does not does not take this and chop it up into a couple messages, it we will be done with First John. Um, and I have thoroughly enjoyed this study. I have never spent this much time studying a book before and uh, uh, <laughs> and letting not not just for, uh, beca- here let me just roll that back a little bit I've never studied like this to change now I've studied like this to preach all the time but I decided instead of just preaching something to help people I'd preach something to help me and uh and I've learned so much and let God shape me through his gospel and through this, this book. Uh, and it's, I mean, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've gotten something out of it. But I, I promise you this, your preacher got a lot out of it. I, 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 it put together concepts that I've have always wondered and I've always uh, struggled with. And uh, things that are recent events that has scared me to death and I didn't know anything I didn't know where to go, didn't know how to turn, didn't know, because uh, I trusted in myself. Um, the book of John kind of helped me to realize that there was Jesus right in the middle of it all, always. We've got a God who's bigger than we ever dreamed. <clears throat> but we're going to conclude here tonight, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll back to verse number 13. I know I, I preached on that verse last week, kind of ended with it. Uh, but I, I feel like it sets the context for the rest of the chapter. Chapter, And if you don't mind standing for the reading of God's word as we look together at verse number 13 and th- onward. The Bible says this, And these things have I written unto you, that ye might, that ye that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. Did you hear that? Did you, did, did you hear that? Let me say it. Let me say it. Did you hear what it says? All unrighteousness is sin. I think we're guilty of putting degrees on sin. But all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. And we know that, what's, or that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, because, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And he and we know that the, <laughs> that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in the, the Son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God 
and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I ask you, God, that you take your Bible, open it up to us. Lord, Lord, just speak on every verse tonight. Speak on our hearts. Rip us a new one if you have to, God. I, I really need something from you tonight. And I know we didn't come here getting our cars driven out of our homes today and uh, not, uh, just to get our ears tickled and our, and our, and our, and our, and our minds uh, uh, in a laughter mood. But we came here, God, for a purpose to grow tonight. And I pray that you'd help us to grow. I pray, God, that you'd empty me of self and sin. Fill me with your spirit because tonight it's the Super Bowl. And I pray to Together, Lord, we leave no doubt. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. John's conclusion here to this wonderful epistle, this book, if you will, is very different than those of Peter and, 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 and uh, uh, Paul. You see, in theirs, they, in their writings, they usually conclude with a, uh, some kind of salutation. Like a kind of like a, like a who's, ha, who's my boys are. You know what I mean? Like uh, this guy and this guy and this guy, they're all hanging with me. And uh, they said, what's up, bro? You know what I mean? Y- y'all don't read it like that. I'm sorry. Um, and and it, it, he's just, uh, there's just all of these salutations and, and make sure you kiss this person with a holy kiss and, you, and, and make sure that you, 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 you know, shake the babies and kiss the hands and all that good stuff. And they try, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they bring all that in and all of a sudden at the very end they have this drop the mic moment about Jesus and then bam, they're done. That ain't John. That ain't him at all. He has been carrying a big stick from verse number 1. Amen? And he's been beating on us the whole time trying to shape us into something. He, he understood this. He's only got so many words left in his life. He's on his last day, so he's going to give you everything that he's got. And then he comes to the very end. And I believe the man stops for a minute. And he goes back and he starts reading over it. Maybe he's, he's like your preacher and he has to do a spell check and grammar check and have, the, have it read back to him so he makes sure that it has some fluidity to it. And, and, then, he, and then he goes, Mmm, man, that's good. How am I going to end this? Amen. That's it. Amen. Now, I know you're not excited about it, because, I mean, who would be excited about such a small word that's just not really much of anything? What he said was, I agree. So he's saying this. He says, I give validity to everything the Holy Spirit just used me to write, and I just wanted to say the last thing I want to put in here is, Amen, I agree. When I was a preacher boy at Fairhaven Baptist Church, it was, we, we had um, uh, five of us called to preach at the same time. And uh, so it was weird because you have all of these kids with pimples on their face preaching the gospel in front of people who don't have pimples on their face. Amen. And we didn't know what we were talking about half the time. We just knew we loved Jesus and we want to tell everybody we knew about it. And uh, so we we began to preach and and then uh, preaching spilled over to how we talked all the time. So uh, CT would say to me, he'd say, hey man, you want to go to Shoney's? afterwards and I go hey man goes right there preacher and Jeremy Jeremy Atkins we call him the man of God the mog man of God he's he's Jeremy you want to go to Shoney's after church Mm, hey man goes right there and we would all, it was just how we talked to each other. We would just have, our, have a good time with just how preachers talked, and that's just how we did it. And, and, you know, if I could give you a title for the sermon tonight, if I could put John's words and, and what he's thinking right here at the very end, he would say this, mm, go, hey man, goes right there. I can't think of any other thing but this. I agree with what the Holy Spirit just wrote in me. And and listen, my question for you tonight is, can you agree with what the Holy Spirit says in the Scripture tonight? You see, in our Scripture tonight, John does not bring us back to um, 
uh, to what was what or what the world that was. He doesn't take us all the way back. And he doesn't tonight spend time on what will be. He's spent time on what was in the book and he spent time on what will be in the book but what he's concerned about right now here at the very end before he says amen is what the world is right now and you know this you know we live a lot of us live in the past would you agree with me ever listen I could sit down with most of the people in here and we could talk about being in high school amen and you could tell me what your favorite song was in high school. And you, by the end of the conversation, you go, man, that's the good old days. Man, back when my, my, back when my legs didn't pop when I walked. <laughs> Amen. And, and can I get a witness? Anybody in here feel that right now? Amen. Back when the NSYNC was bye, 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 and amen. It was good. No, no, no. Earth, wind, and fire. Come on now. So, I'm trying to come up with something for you, man, but I just I don't have it right now. Like it was like, yeah, last week he was in high school. Yeah. Remember, yeah, remember he graduated during COVID, poor guy. <laughs> he had ones and ones of people at his graduation. And they were all standing fifty feet apart. Man, I'm sorry. That's rough. But back in my day, we had all the people in the Civic Center when we graduated, back in my day. And when we have a tendency to flash forward, y'all do this? We flash forward, we think about what retirement's going to be like. Yeah. I'm, listen, if, whew, that, I looked at my 401k, dropped 10% in the last month and a half, uh, that Biden, I don't know what I'm going to do. I ain't going to be able to go to the beach and live for the rest of my life. I'm going to have to spend one more week working. You know what I mean? We're looking ahead to the point where we're miserable about something that hasn't come yet and may never come. Oh, Lord, help me. Did I just make you mad? <laughs> but we, we get so focused on what was and what is to come. But may I say to you tonight, John wants to bring our attention to what is. And listen, I don't know about you, but I shouldn't be living in the past. I shouldn't be living in the future. Baby, my life is right now. I've got little kids that have moments that I want to remember. I have a wife who I, I want to hold her hand and walk around and just enjoy what we got together. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm having so much fun being your pastor right now. I'm excited about the future. I love what we did in the past, but right now is awesome. Awesome. And you know what? what? What kind of life would we be living if we didn't live right now? So John wants you to understand, hey, you can worry about tomorrow, you can worry about yesterday, but you're living in today, so I want to bring your mind to the world that is today. So he says this in verse number 14. He says, this confidence... This is the confidence that we have in Him. You say, who is He? Well, God, uh, in verse number 13, we found that He is the Son of God. So here He is. We have this confidence in Him, the Son of God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Hmm. You see, John wants us to bring our mind to the understanding that, that in God is endless resources. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in God is endless resources. We have a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and owns everything underneath, amen? Amen. That's amazing. We have a we have a, the Bible says that if that that, that 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 God can supply all of our needs according to His riches in glory. Yeah, but when we focus on things of the world, we find that there is limitations in our life. Would you agree with me? 
when we focus on things down here, we're stuck in the limitations of our own mindset and we wonder, is there any possible way that we can get what we need? Number one, we have to realize what is a need and what is a want. Because there's a lot of people praying for what they want and not for what they need. You need a car. You don't need a Mercedes. You need a house. You don't need a mansion. You need a job. You don't need 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Amen? Why are we praying for things that we want when God said, I'll give you what you need? Uh-huh. You see, the, John points out to us that God does two things. He hears us and He heeds us. What's that mean? He hears us and He'll help us. Amen? That's what He does. But the problem with most of us is that we're so focused on the limitations of the world that we just don't believe that God can. But may I say to you tonight that maybe you'll believe that God can if you can go back and check the record. Go back and check the record of all the times that God could and you'll believe that God can. Write that down. That sounds smart. That must be, I read it one time, it got stuck in my head, somebody else said it, not me. Go back to all the times that God could, and you'll believe that God can. Uh, We have been working on our prayer at the house with the kids, um, because Titus got in in a way of praying that said, uh, it kind of went like this, it was very... um, What's the word I need to say? Um, Robotic. Um, He would say, he knew exactly what he was going to pray. He would say, Lord, I pray that there be no meteors to hit. Because the dinosaurs got lost in meteors. You know what I mean? Y'all know where I'm at? I pray, I pray that we, uh, God, I pray that there be no robbers, no fires. And he just just goes through the list of all the stuff. And then then he, he says, And pray for so-and-so, and and pray for so-and-so, and and pray for so-and-so. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Sydney got this idea, because she's way holier than me, that we get a prayer board. We'd take one of those dry erase boards, put it on the wall, and then we'd ask them, who do you want to pray for? We'd go around the room, and we'd write on the board who they wanted to pray for. So, so, uh, (laughs) Titus was in... John and Daniel were covering um, uh, Titus's class a few weeks ago. I guess it's been about a month, month and a half ago. And he could just tell that John and, and Daniel just didn't seem like John and Daniel. And he said, I want to pray for John and Daniel. And I said, all right. And I wrote it on the board. And then he told me how to spell John, right? <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and he's going and, and then he asks and then Ava says who she wants to pray for Sydney says who she wants to pray for I say who I want to pray for and we got this list up here and we watched this over the uh, uh, since January now we've watched this list grow and dwindle grow and dwindle about February Titus gets the idea because we got to erase people when their prayer's answered, right? Erase people. And he said, we would go, and it was, do we, do we, did we see this prayer answered? Yeah. So he erased it. Titus in February said, Dad, how many prayers has God answered? Great question. I said, well, let's see. We started counting them up, and we got an estimate, and we put it on the board. And then as God has answered prayers over the last few months now. We've erased them. We've changed the number. We're at 35. You say, what happened? My little boy who's eight years old and my little girl who's four years old are learning 
that God answers prayer. At 38 years old, your, your preacher is learning that God answers prayer. And whenever I can't see that God can, I can look at the number on the board and see how many times God could. He said, you got to ask me. But he put a stipulation on it. But you got to ask me according to my will. And you've got to accept the fact that it just might not be in my will that you have what you think you need because I might have something better for you. Did you hear that? Instead of focusing on what God is not giving you, look at what God has gave you because I promise you this, when you focus on what God has given you, you'll find out that God has given you more than what you thought you needed. One preacher said, Hey man, goes right there. Amen. I wonder tonight, can you say amen to that? Can you say amen that God hears your prayers? Can you say amen tonight that God heeds to your prayers? Yes. Look at verse number 16. i got to go on. i got four of these tonight. I, I don't ever usually get more than one or two. So verse 16 says this, If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There's stipulations here. And then he wants you to know this, that there is a sin unto death. And I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. He wants you to understand this. That everything <laughs> that misses the mark is a, is a sin. Right? We talked about this in chapter number 1. He's, we spent extensive time on this. We found out that sometimes you miss the mark. What do you do? Do you quit? No, you get out another arrow and you aim better. Amen? But you see, he uses this, this, this phrase in here that just blows my mind. It is a sin, a sin. And I got to thinking, man, why is it a, a, a two words that is exactly the same thing? Why do they fall together here? Well, it's because they're two different words that form a phrase. A sin, a sin. Well, the first word is, um, I'm not Daniel. Pray for me. <clears throat> Harmatano, or hamartano, hamartano and Hamartia. Hamartano means this, to miss the mark. We know what that means. But here, the second word, the second sin is Hamartia, which means to wander from the past. So John lays this disclaimer down for us, to sin unto death and to sin unto derailment. Mm. Woo. You see, when he's talking about a sin that is unto death, I believe that his mind has soared back um, to the early days of the church. And he began to consider all of the reviving uh, power of the Holy Spirit and what was going on and how excited everybody was. I mean, you think about it. When you see 5,000 people saved at one time, it, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, I, 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 listen, I don't know what I'd do. We've had 15 in one service before, and I went home and just sat there and cried like a baby. Amen. It's amazing. But to see 5,000 people give their heart to Jesus, and then the Bible said, and the Lord added to the church daily that those people who would be saved. Every day people were getting saved in the early days of the church, and they were having this huge revival because Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and risen again, and everybody got new life, and they were excited about it. And then they, they're like, man... I think we got a church here, you know. <laughs> we got a little church rocking up in here. But, and they started noticing, hey, uh, we got people with needs, right? Because that's what churches are for. It's a body of, of called out believers, people called out, assembled together. That's what church is. 
And we're called out to hurt together, to, to joy together, to have fellowship together. Hey Amen. That's what, what church is all about. It's called together. We are here together. I'm sorry if you came to church to be a party of one, but we ain't going to let you. Amen. We pulled up a chair beside of our... Mm, woo! Glory to God. We pulled up a chair right beside of us, ordered you, mm, ordered you an ice cream and said, come sit with us tonight. Amen. You came here to be alone. We came here to be alone with you. Amen. You said, I'm going solo. I said, I'm going with you. Amen. And the church said, we got to do some stuff. So somebody sold a piece of property. I think it's Bartholomew. I think it's his name. Daniel, you rain man. Maybe you right. Maybe you know. But I believe it's Bartholomew. Somebody like that. Somebody with a weird name. Sold some stuff. And uh, the church got really pumped up about it. So there was this couple that had some, some property, and they're like, you know what, we need to sell this thing too. Ananias and Sapphiras. They sold it, right? Y'all, y'all know the story, Acts chapter 4. They sold the property. Ananias come walking in. I, I, he, he dug in his pocket. He brought out all, a big old roll of ones. You know what I'm talking about, that guy? Wants everybody to see. He got a hundred dollar bill and he's wrapped a bunch of ones. You know, you know what I mean? He got the ones in the middle wrapped a hundred out there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That guy. That guy got the wad. He, he hands it over to the preacher. Here you go. But the preacher had the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, Hey, ask him a question. Is this all of it? Oh yeah, man, it's all of it. It ain't all of it. <laughs> you held half of it, and you just gave a portion. Now, it wasn't wrong for him to give a portion. There wasn't nothing wrong with it at all. The problem was he lied about it to the Holy Spirit. And when you lie and you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, that is a sin, the Bible says, unto death. Wife comes walking in. She got her Mr. I just pictured that she got her Mr. T starter kit on. Got 24 cold, 24 carat everything, just walking up there. Where's my husband at? She's wearing everything that they just sold, amen? She's wearing it all over. And uh, y'all can't see that in the Bible. This is how I read it. And she said, uh, she said Where, where's Ananias? And the preacher said, let me ask you a question. Because your husband's rotten in the ground. Did you give all the... There she fell. Because she lied against the Holy Spirit. Paul said, that's a sin unto death. But he wants us to understand that there is a sin unto derailment. There is a sin unto derailment. You say, what is that? That's all sin. You can't have fellowship with God when you have sin present in your life. Whew. John wants us to understand this. That he said that you may not die immediately, but there is going to be a time when you die because of sin. But here's what you can do. You can have life again. So my responsibility to my brother is to go over and say, Hey, bro, I see what you're doing. I see what's going on. <laughs> the Bible tells us to repent. That means to turn. Doesn't, doesn't say we have to be re-saved, does it? No. It says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. Very last one of it. Turn. Turn around. He said you, you could put the train back on the tracks. I wonder how many people could say amen to the fact that whenever they mess up and they miss the mark and the, the train gets off the track a little bit, that they don't have to become a train wreck. They can get it back on the track. Amen. Goes right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, look, look, I got to go on. Because Sydney said, if I ain't done by seven, she, or by eight, I'm, I'm going to get whipped. Um, it says this, verse number 18. 
we know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth him. And that wicked one keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. And we know, I love how he just keeps saying that. We'll get to that in a minute. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. He said this, he said, Our minds are brought into the joy of knowing that whosoever is born of God sins not. My sins are forgiven, covered by the blood. Does that mean that I still have the ability to sin? Yeah. But now I have a desire not to remain in sin. Did you hear that? You said, prove that to me, preacher. I need to see it in the Word. Well, let me show you in the Word. He that is begotten of God, look at that Word, keepeth himself. I don't need a promise keeper to keep me promised. Amen. Did you hear that? It says that I keep myself. Mm. I'm going to explain it to you. Because he keepeth himself, if he falls, he'll fall under conviction and he'll have a desire to change. In other words, he finds out he stinks with Christian B.O. and decides that he needs to take a bath. Y'all don't like whatever I get these analogies that are just weird, don't you? You see, you know, let's just be honest. Some Christians just stink. They got Christian body odor, don't they? They reek of the world that they live in. Amen. Amen. You see, you know what the difference between an adult and a child is? An adult understands that eventually they need to take a bath because they got to get what they've been walking around in uh, the whole day off their body. Otherwise, they're going to smell of it. So they got to go do. They got to go in the shower and to put some scrubbing bubbles on and let that stuff marinate in their body and, and peel some of that layer off. Amen. A kid don't think like that. Because the kids don't want to take a bath. If your kids want to take a bath all the time, I'm proud of you. You're better parent than me. But my kids, Brother Carter, don't want to take no bath. And it's not because they're not clean or they don't want to be clean. It's that they don't want to quit what they're doing to go do what they need to do. So they'd rather play with the toys that they got out. They'd rather eat the candy that they got out. They'd rather spend time uh, playing with their friends than taking the bath that they need to take. Yeah. They're they're living in the presence. You're right. (laughs) But they stink in the presence. Hey, man, they got body odors. (laughs) So they need to go get in 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 the Dow soap a little bit. And we got we to argue about it. We got to say, hey, listen, I said turn off Mario Kart. I said go get yourself in the bathtub. And then they get in there and they go, why is the bathtub cold for? Because 25 minutes ago I, told, I ran it for you. There was bubbles in there. There was a boat in there in the bubbles. But you waited so long, we had to take the boat out. The bubbles have now dissipated. They're gone. And you, honey, had to take a two-second shower or bath or whatever. And we got to get you in the bed because your mama's going to beat us both. Sorry. I'm venting a little bit. It's fresh. This is fresh. I'm angry. I'm trying not to sin, all right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but he, uh, but kids, they don't, they don't like, they don't think like that. And you know what the difference between a Christian who's got bo 
and a Christian who's, who's you know what, I need, to take a, I need to take a shower. They know they need to lay down the toys and do what they need to do to get themselves clean. Oh, the Bible says they keep themselves. Wow. Man, that's tough. How many is thankful? How many can say amen that I don't have to smell like a Christian with B.O.? Amen. I can take a bath tonight. Take a bath. Wash yourself. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. We're getting crazy. No. Yeah. And I need to go on. But let me stop real quick. The reason why we have so many people in churches today, and, and I'm, I'm thankful that we're a church that has some B.O. You don't know why? We've got a lot of young Christians, babies. And uh, I'm sorry to y'all, you seasoned people who come to this church, and you come on Wednesday, and you come on Sunday nights, and I love you. And I'm so proud of you. You're growing, uh, in, hey, you're growing even deeper than you ever thought you would. But sometimes your preacher has to, has to tell some people on Sunday mornings to turn off a Mario Kart. And I know you had to hear it too. You, you'd, already, you'd already took a bath and you was already working on the dishes. I know. I ain't mad at you. And I ain't mad at them. But I know what some baby Christians need. They need to take a bath. Hmm. Sorry. <clears throat> I just felt like I needed to say that because I don't want y'all to think I beat on y'all. I just want you to know that we're just trying to teach some people how to take a shower. You know, if they clipped just this part of this message, this would get a lot of hits on YouTube. It'd be hilarious. Like, Local pastor talks about bathing in church. Verse 18. All right, here it is. This is the last verse. Last two verses here. Is it? Oh, where are we? Yeah. I'm in verse number 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. We see two words that John just uses over and over. Have y'all noticed them yet? I saved them for tonight. They are, no, we know, I know, you know, and truth. And what is true? <laughs> you see, he wants to bring us lastly to the world's lies. He says, I want you to understand this, that <laughs> the devil is a liar. You say, preacher, how do you know, the, uh, how, does, how, when, when, how, does, how do you know John knows that the devil is a liar? Because he said in, in, in John chapter 8, verse 44, Ye are of your fathers the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaketh, or when he speaketh a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father thereof. The devil's a liar, and the world lies with him. So now he uses the words in verse number 18 and 19. We know. We know, we know, what do we know? We know what is true. We know what is true. <laughs> and if I could take verse number 
18 and or verse number 20 and verse number 21 and, and put them together, I would, I, would, I, would, I would have to write it like this. Knowing the truth will never cause you to believe a lie. Knowing the truth will never cause you to believe a lie. When I was growing up, I, 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 y'all, I told you I have an older brother. His name's Christopher. He's five years older than me. He's one of my heroes. And I've always looked up to him, and he's always lied to me. Because um, that's what big brothers do to little brothers. And uh, <clears throat> he'd tell me things that happened, and he'd tell me these big, huge stories. And, and I always believed him because he's my big brother. My big brother's not going to lie to me. He told me when he was in Nam. <clears throat> That he took down three Charlies all by himself with his bare hands. And I believed him because he's my brother. And he's my hero. And he knew. But G.I. Joe taught me knowing is half the battle. So what did I have to do? I had to learn some things. So when I got into high school, I found this is a long time. I found out that my brother never fought Charlie. He never, he never went to Nam. He doesn't have Asian horns or whatever they call it. Yeah, that's it. He don't have it. He don't even have orange chicken or General Tso's. He don't have it. He'd never been to Nam. Because he was born in 1978. He ain't never been. Miss Andy, my brother's a liar. But it wasn't until I learned the truth that I stopped believing the lie. And many of us Christians today are asking questions and we're getting answers from the wrong source. So now we're believing the lies of the world over the truth of the gospel. And we'll believe things that we learn in, as we're growing up uh, about this this guy who went and hung out with birds on a little island and wrote a little book called The Origins of Species. Right? And he, who nobody wants to report, but uh, on his deathbed, recanted of everything that he said because he didn't even believe it. Sorry. Google that. But we have started believing lies because we allow Facebook to shape our gospel. We allow Instagram, Twitter, CNN, Fox News, CNBC. I'm I'm trying to think of more. I'm lost now. ABC. Sports Center, I had to hit myself on this, to shape what we believe. And it tells us stories about what to believe, but yet there's a book that was designed to teach us. And everything that that does is contrary to what this says. And when that says something different than what this says, we need to run from that and run to this. So maybe we should keep our face out of Facebook and get our face in the blessed book and, and stop looking at the world to, to shape our, to our theology and our, our doctrine and our, our understanding of God's truth and start looking at God's Word and letting it shape us and mold us. Let the gospel set us free and maybe maybe we can be happy and healthy and free I don't know about you but I came here tonight to say this amen goes right there (laughs) 
I can say this, I, I agree that I live in a world that, that, that has placed limitations on my life, but I'll say this, because of Jesus Christ, I have no limitations placed on me. I agree with that. I, I agree that I live in a sin-filled world, but I cannot be derailed by it because I agree that Jesus Christ, mm, that Jesus Christ died and forgave me of my sins. And all I have to do is call on His name and He can change my derailment. I believe this. I, I agree that Satan is in control of this world, but he cannot control me because I can take a bath, amen, and get changed. I agree that I live in a world of lies, but I know the truth and the truth will set me free. I came here tonight to say this. Amen goes right there. I wonder, will you say amen with me? Do you agree? Do you agree? With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. I'll say this. John, a lot smarter than me, he walked with Jesus in ways that I'll never get to until I get to heaven. And he got to see things that I won't get to see until I get there. But I'm thankful that I got a word tonight that the world that I'm living in I said, the world that I'm living in ain't going to be my last stop. But while I'm living here, I don't have to live like the world I'm in. I can be changed. And I don't know who it is here tonight, but I wonder if there's a change that you need to make in your life. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. May I stop right there and say this, Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. Jesus died for you so that you can have more life. If you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus, why not tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you say this, Preacher, I want to lift my hand in testimony and say this, if Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to meet Him. I want to raise my hand and wave it as high as I can and give testimony. I know Jesus and He set me free. Maybe you're here tonight and you say this, Preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved, but I sure would like to know. I, I, listen, I, I want to be changed. Here's my hand. Will you pray for me? I ain't looking, nobody's looking around, it's just me. I want to pray for you. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, will you pray for me that I could overcome the world that I'm living in and live beyond the world I'm living in? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Amen. Yes. Preacher, will you pray for me that, I'm, that I agree to follow Jesus wherever he takes me in this world. Here's my hand. I wonder tonight how many people will step out of their seat, come down to this altar, and tell Jesus, I agree. I agree that you can fix anything. You could take me anywhere. You can do anything you want with me. I'm just saying I agree with you tonight. This one's come. How about you? Maybe you're here tonight and you need to take one of them Christian baths. It wouldn't hurt just to get a fresh dip tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and you need to tell the devil to leave you alone. You can bring him to the altar and say, leave me alone. Maybe you're here tonight and you want to just make sure that you, that you get your life back on the rail. Maybe there's something you need tonight. Just something. And you need to take it to Jesus. Maybe you just need to come tell him about it. These have come. How about you?
Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we're thankful for your word tonight. God, I pray that it is a word that set us free and helps us grow. Lord, I sure am thankful. You're wonderful. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I do want to make sure that I remind everybody to bring a friend this week. Mike said a thousand people has uh, told him no, but a th but there's still one, a man that that's out there. So uh, it could be the thousandth and one that gives their heart to Jesus. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> I asked Sydney to date me three times before she said yes. P persistence pays off. Amen. Um, but uh, every person will leave with a, a, a sweet treat, a peep. Amen. Good stuff right there. Um, we will have uh, uh, Mother's Day the following week. We'll have a, the kids will have a special uh, uh, little something for the, the, the mothers, um, and then we'll have a special message for the moms. And I believe that Miss Sydney is working on... Um, Daniel will be teaching the children's church, and I think Steve and a few other men, she's already voluntold to uh, help, <clears throat> um, and all the mamas, will, uh, we're going to do our best to get as many moms upstairs for a few minutes, for at least, for at least a little bit, and um, maybe the preacher will volunteer the parent, or the daddies that they can go downstairs when the kids start trying this uh, that you know what I mean amen we will also have this little little we're gonna move my chair again <clears throat> and uh, we've or we've got this little background that we're gonna put up there with some some scenery stuff and a little happy Mother's Day uh, banner and uh, if you want to get a picture with your family uh, just bring your phone Somebody will find somebody to take some pictures. Uh, some maybe a guy will volunteer. I don't know. I, I can't. I'll be honest with you. I'll cut your head off. Um, but we're going we'll take some pictures of the families. <clears throat> we we found out that a lot of people get the pictures every year for these events, and eventually we'll have one of them church spaces where we can do stuff like that. So we're just going to take my chair out every time we can to. <clears throat> make sure that we can get our picture opportunities <clears throat> so that you don't have to stand in front of the pulpit all the time. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, tomorrow night, let me tell you about this little thing we call True Freedom. If you have anybody who's in long-term recovery or who's trying to recover, um, our goal is to see them recovered. And uh, we, we want you to pray pray for that. Uh, tomorrow night, I believe, is, uh, is, a, is a discussion meeting. These things, they're fun. You learn things. I get a sermon every time I'm there. Um, and I'm excited to get back. I, I'm going to miss again tomorrow. So next Sunday, or next Thursday, I get to be there again. I look forward to it. it uh, for some reason, it just, I feel home in there. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a mess, but I'm working on it. Amen. Uh, I have other announcements, but... Catch up on the band or on Facebook. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. We pray that you keep us safe on our way home. You're awesome. In Jesus' name.